Today, we give you the super simple secret tips of the Lighting Ninja. Shh. There's only one thing that we love more than eating food with chopsticks, and that's photography. Hey everybody, welcome to the Panoptic Chopstick Show, where every time we feed you great tidbits, tidbits <laughs> of information. Hey, we've got a great show this we week. We do. Talking about our super secret salacious ninja tips. Yes, we are going to talk about the things that we think are going to improve your photography because they have improved ours. Yeah, you know, it, it's been really, really fun this year. It has. We've been. learned a lot. I mean, we, you know, people say, oh, you guys know everything. No. No, we, we know, know nothing. nothing. <laughs> That's it. We're two bumbling idiots. But really, it comes down to, like, we are ABL. Yeah. Always be learning. Constantly. And, uh, you know, so we learned some, some tips that we want to share with you this week that can dramatically improve your photography. That's right. Hoi! Super secret ninja tip number one. This is probably my favorite tip that we've learned this year, and that is... It's a goodie. It's a goodie. Quit fighting the sun and follow the sun. Or don't fight the light, follow the light. We have been fighting the light our for entire all of our career. Photography lives. Yeah. So what do we mean by that? So here's my question to you, Steve. Mm -hmm. So let's go back in our little time machine here and let's think back um, two months ago, three months ago, yep. probably. Let's pretend this light right here is our sun. And you're out there sun. taking a picture of me, okay? I am your father. Take my picture. No. So we have our sun coming on my left side. Yeah. yeah. So Six months ago, where would you have placed the light if you right wanted here. to light me? Because I'm going to fill in opposite this side. side right? You wanted to fill it in. Create some drama. Yes, that's the big thing is drama, huh? But here's one thing I've learned: you don't need harsh light or anything to create drama. No, good light creates drama. All right. So what do we do now? All right. So let's take a picture. Let's pretend we took a picture. It's actually let me show you a picture that we took a couple months ago. And look at that picture right there. Look at our model's face. It looks great. It's a great yeah, photo, but we lit her from the opposite side of the, the sun. Function. Yep. So, and that's how most of us light. However, if we start thinking about the sun, if it's coming, it's putting a bunch of light on the back of our head, it is, should naturally, the light should be coming around, following from this area. All the light should be coming from my left side. If we take our light, rather than lighting from this side, light from this side, it's going to look just as natural. You're going to get just as much drama because it's going to fill this in, but it's going to still retain some yep, nice yep. shadow and modeling to where it's going to look amazing. No, it looks cool in that picture. So that, I mean, look at totally this photo it. right here. Yes. You, you see a totally different look. It looks very it, it natural. Is, it has truly changed how we shoot and how our pictures look. I mean, I, I'm actually really blown away. With yeah, that, it's been that really, simple really cool. little thing. And it's really funny because we both learned it about the same time. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like one day... Um, I think you you called me up and said, hey, Mark, you ought to go check out our buddy Scott Robert Lamb and yep. see what he's, doing what he's doing in Paris life. with this light. And it was funny because that morning I had watched Jared Platt on B&H Live. Do the same thing. Doing the exact same thing. Uh, talking about following that light. And it, it was like the, the light bulb, bing, popped up over my head. And it was amazing. So that is super ninja secret number one. Follow the light. Don't fight the light. Hoi! Super Ninja Secret Number Two. All right, so this tip is all about bringing an assistant with you. Yes. Every time. So here's the here's the thing. We try to shoot with an assistant always. Now that could be Mark, my assistant, right? Yep. Or it could be my wife. Could be even my kids. But whoever you can bring out there. And these assistants aren't people that are shooting with you. No. They're the people that are helping you, holding light stands, making sure things aren't turning into sales and blowing away. But man, it makes such a big difference. Yeah, in fact, when, when I shoot a lot of times, I'll shoot with my light on a monopod. And now we're totally mobile. And by doing that, it allows me to move the light. We call it a valve, voice activated right. light stand, right? Yeah. We can move it wherever we want. It gives you want. freedom. You probably have noticed in a few of our shoots that our lights have blown over. You know why? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're not using an assistant. That's right. So we have we really try to take this to heart now and always using assistant. Yeah. It's made a huge difference. And because you don't have to then think about, no. is my light going to blow over? It really, that's what I talk about. It improves your photography because it allows you to concentrate on the photography, yeah. not on the equipment. Yeah. How, how often have you taken a photo and thought, I need to move that light a little bit closer. And you thought, no, nah, that's good enough because I don't want to walk over and move it. Yep. We're lazy. It's just the reality is photographers are lazy. I don't want to carry a sandbag. 
I don't want to pull out my big heavy stands and I just go, you know, it's a good day for natural light. It's not a good day for natural no. light most of the time. So what so, a great tip is. Tip number two. I, I just heard a tip this, or not a tip, but I heard a quote this week as somebody said, the greatest thing you can do to improve your photography is get an assistant. It's true. And it is totally, it's totally true. true. Hoi! Super secret tip number three. Now, tip number three, it's relatively new for us. It's brand new. We just came up with this idea not too long ago. You came up with this idea. You, you sent me a picture. That's right. Because <laughs> here's what happened. We were going to photograph on a Southern California beach. Yep. And if you've ever photographed anywhere in the Los Angeles basin, if you put a light stand on the ground, you can expect somebody to tell you either to get the light stand out of there because you, you can't shoot there or you're going to get written a ticket. Yep. So there's all kinds big of permitting. Ticket yes, big, ticket. big permitting process to have just to take uh, engagement. Because portraits. you're right professional that's right so we were not doing a professional shoot we were just out there to have some fun shooting a friend of ours we wanted to try some things so the idea that i came up with is okay i can't put a light stand on the ground but i want to take my big s1 monolight because when i go to the beach i want to shoot high speed sync yep. i want to capture the detail yeah, we're, we're shooting at noon i mean again the, the yeah. ideal time to shoot exactly of so here, here's what we came up with. You see me wearing the backpack right now. So again, there's two reasons. Number one is gonna be when you can't use a, a stand, but a lot of times when you wanna be very mobile, this is actually, we found it works out really well. If you notice, I actually now can just turn to my side, bring up my camera, and I am shooting. So wait, explain what you've done here. You took our S1 Monolite. Yes. And you stuck it in a Peak Design backpack. Yeah. So this thing is really, really ingenious. Yep. And, and I am blown away with kind of what you came up with. Because exactly. I, I stuck it first in my Low Pro bag, yep. where it's worked fantastically. But then the other day you went, Mark, get out the Peak Design bag. Because the Peak Design bag has access from dual, both sides. Access. So my light goes in this side. From this side, I can now access turning the power on and off. When I had it in the other bag, I had to just leave it on all yep. the time, which no problem with it. These batteries run forever. But now I can turn that on and I'm shooting. So this was so much fun. When we were out there shooting, nobody hassled us. They didn't I mean, even look it, twice. No, it, it, people don't even notice, even though you got this big bulbous thing sticking out. But we just used this cone with a little sock over the front. It worked incredibly well. Yeah. Here was the, the coolest part, is that, okay, there were times that we wanted maybe a different lighting pattern than what it would create when it's on your back. Yep. So Mark's like, hey, take this off my back. And hold my bag. And just hold the bag, right? So now by doing that, I could hold it up, I could hold it over my head, I could move so it's truly off camera. Yeah. Nobody hassles us because I can just put yep. it right back on my we, bag. We got down to the beach itself and it had a nice slope. We set my bag down. We set your bag right on top of my bag to angle it. And we both just went to town shooting pictures. Oh, it was awesome. And it was so much fun. Things we could not have done. So Peak Design, we have just created a new design to pique people's interest. That's right. <laughs> that is the Ninja is super stealthy. So that's all, it's all about how can you be stealthy. Yeah. This invention creates stealthiness That's right. beyond belief. The Lighting Ninja sees a problem and he solves That's it. right. Ha! Lighting Ninja. Hoi! Super secret number four. So last but not least, we have our final tip. But before I get to the final tip, I'm gonna give a little bonus tip. Ooh, and the bonus yes. tip is don't over light. Right? Yes. Start with one light and then add light if you need more, right? Because yeah. we've done this too many times where we go, Let's try all four lights, you know, and we get it all set up. And then it's just, it's kind of flat, actually. Yeah, it's like, why didn't drama. we do that? So many times you can create an incredible dramatic picture with one light yeah. because you're using the sun as a backlight or something else. Yeah. Start with one, and add more. And the reality is, for most of the stuff that we get paid to do, it's one light. Two lights if you count the sun, and it's because it's senior portraits, it's yep. engagements, it's weddings, it's it's all of those things. If you're doing fashion or you're doing some kind of commercial shoot, we understand you're going to say, no, you got to have six lights or 10 lights or 14 lights or two lights. or But we get 90% of our work done with one light. Which leads me into this. The real tip. The real tip. Yeah. A ninja travels light. Does. Right? Because here we're a great example of this. Our truck that we bring out there, we bring the Suburban out to every shoot, <laughs> we fill a Suburban with junk. I mean, we have every light we yeah. own, everything. What do we usually bring out of the car? One bag. One bag. 
but we still bring everything with us. You don't need to do that. So what we've come up with is, you guys know that we shoot with these Interfit monolights, the Interfit S1s. Now, the, the kit that we have is called the backpack kit. It comes with two lights in this backpack. Now you can buy this backpack separately, but check this thing out. This is so awesome. If I can figure out the right zip. Yeah. Here we go. So this thing here, this right is, now, this is this is our senior portrait, kind of our, our on-location portrait kit. Yep. It's one S1 light. Yep. Okay. I'll hold that. My reflector. Okay. Reflector. My little sock that goes over the front of the reflector if I'm just shooting sock bare. Right? My collapsible beauty dish, which I use like on 90% of my senior portrait work or my portrait work because it's so small. Yeah, it is. But it fits in the bag. Yep. My D810 camera with my 72, my, my 24 to 70. 7200 also fits in here yeah. and my 85. Yeah, this bag is deep enough for a set for a 7200. My light stand. I have got my entire travel kit in a backpack. Yep. So what we were talking about tip number two, always bring an assistant with you. Sometimes you can't, you have to be your own Sherpa. This allows you to bring your own Sherpa, everything you need to create stunning imagery in one backpack. Yeah, and, and it doesn't really weigh a lot. It doesn't, it's it's awesome. Now, the cool thing I said is that this backpack, you can order it separately, it's like 150 bucks, it's not very expensive. It is a phenomenal backpack. It can be reconfigured in different shapes, but this shape works well to hold the light and the... Yep, plus you got all kinds of extra storage all over this thing, it's, like you do in any other backpack. Yep. So it's it's killer, I highly recommend doing that, but, but that tip is just all about traveling light. Yeah. Taking what you need, yep. and only what you need. Only what you need. You know, so many times we've taken this kit with both lights in it, then we're carrying the softbox separately. We use it less when we carry more. Yep. When we do this, it's like open that kit up and, and let's Boom. use it. There you go. So, what? Those are great tips. Those are all practical things that have really changed the way you and I shoot. Mm -hmm. And I think the word is consistent. We take consistently better portraits using those four things. Yep. Those four things we learned. <coughs> Excuse me, just chokes me up. Four <laughs> things we learned this year. Well, it's time for a little sushi. It's very colorful today. It is. We've got a nice nice plate here. And this, uh, you know, I think, wow, it's uh, some slippery. It is very slippery. Slippery sushi. But uh, this takes us right into our talking raw. The chopstick guy that cannot use this chopstick. Which you discovered a, wow. What this is going on today? You discovered a little tip that we're going to talk about in Talking Raw, um, all about sharpening. Yes. Just show us that tip. Let me show you now. All right, so for today's Talking Raw, I just want to give you a really quick tip on how to sharpen. That's one of those questions I get asked all the time. Mark, what's the best way in Photoshop to sharpen? Well, guess what? If you would have asked me six months ago, I would have told you, unsharp mask. That's kind of been the standard for sharpening over the years, but things have really changed. I don't know if you're familiar yet with the sharpening inside of Camera Raw, but it is phenomenal. Let me show you. All right, so normally I told you I would go filter, sharpen, smart sharpen, or unsharp mask is what the standard has been. I don't want you to do that anymore. I want you to use the camera raw filter you remember you can do this on your way to photoshop you don't have to do it you can do it right in camera raw when you open your raw images up if i go to my third tab in my details tab i'm going to see sharpen so i'm going to zoom in a bunch here so we actually can see a close-up of her face there maybe not that close there we go now here's where the real tip is that i wanted to show you today when i move this slider Sometimes it can be very difficult to decide how much you're sharpening. This is a pretty sharp image to begin with. Uh, no sharpening has been applied, but it's kind of difficult to tell exactly how much sharpening that I should do. Here's what I want you to do. Hold down your Alt key or Option key on a Mac, and when you do that and start sliding this slider, it will discard all of the color information, and you will be looking at a black and white image, and it makes it much easier to identify where it's actually sharpening so you can decide how much. I can also hold down my Alt key and I can define my radius to decide how much I would like to sharpen. Maybe that's a little too sharp. You can start seeing I don't want to sharpen that skin detail. I just want to sharpen those edges. It looks great to me there. I also can hold this Alt or Option key down 
to do noise reduction. So when I'm moving this luminance slider, trying to remove some of the noise out of my image, I actually can see it a little bit better when I'm working in uh, this process here when I'm holding down the Alt key because it'll discard that color information. Remember, I told you, this also works in Lightroom. So if you're in the sharpening panel in Lightroom, hold down the Alt key or the Option key, you'll discard the color information and will make it much easier for you to do your sharpening and get the best out of it. So this is your Talking Raw for this week. Hey, you know, we got a little photography news to share this week. We do, a couple things that couple big things. in the news. Yeah, so the big, big thing is WPPI yes. starts this weekend. I know, I am excited. I'm more excited about WPPI than probably like Christmas because well it is kind of Christmas it's Christmas for the photographer so you know I, I mentioned the ABL right always be learning yeah in the beginning that's what WPPI is to me you mentioned it's like Christmas but you know it's it's another time that we get to learn I know you think that we know everything about photography and let me tell you we, do. we don't <laughs> <laughs> we do no we don't we don't we, we know nothing yeah we know nothing but no really it's a time that I go there to kind of recharge and and refresh my photography knowledge and man i, I, I love know. it i learned so much exactly there. so all i have to say is it's coming up it's in las vegas if you if you can make it out there make it out there but i know a lot of you can't find some place to learn whether it's a workshop whether it's whatever you know another conference in another area yeah. go the go learning curve so much faster when you're working with others yep it's just so a blast so that's coming up this week learning. we are going to be doing um a bunch of live stuff from WPPI. Yeah, in the booth, in we're the Interfit doing, booth. Yep, and we're going to be doing daily overviews. We're going to be interviewing people. We're mm -hmm. going to be having a blast. So That's make right. sure you watch the channel That's for right. that. Yep. Now, what else is in the news? This so week? this is kind of a... This has been... The, the one thing we were thinking about talking about today is the fact that this has been one of the big controversial things in the news, and that is... Is Peter Lick a fraud? Yes. Now, do you know who Peter Lick is? Many do, many don't. Many do. Peter, if you go to well, Las Vegas, is a great example. He's got 19 galleries, I think, in Las Vegas, but also in Hawaii. Any place that, that tourists go, he's got. There's a Peter Lick gallery. Peter Lick photo galleries. Now, these pictures yeah. are amazing. Are. There, there's no doubt that he's a great photographer, a fantastic photographer. Amazing. It's, yeah. He, he, in fact, is the guy that has sold the most expensive print in history. He's probably the most successful commercial photographer out there today. Yeah, today. His, his pictures are very saturated, extremely sharp, just beautiful, beautiful imagery. Mm -hmm. What was the controversy? So the controversy is, is the fact that, I don't know if so much him, but his, his people that speak for him are constantly, if you walk into a gallery, they're gonna tell you, Peter does no Photoshopping, this is just right out of camera, he's just that good. And all of us as photographers go, I don't believe that. I've never heard Peter Lick say it, but I've heard other people in the gallery say yep. it. So he came out with a new photo this week, or whatever, uh, about three weeks ago, three weeks ago so. that the moon was rising behind a hill. You could see this tree perfectly. You could see the sunset or sunrise. All these things in one photo. It was a technically perfect photo. It was. And you could not tell that it had been Photoshopped. That's what made it so... There was a whole thing on, you know, F-stoppers. They, they went through a 30-minute kind of debate back and forth. Is this... Is yeah. this picture real? And you know, these these people were experts at like dissecting pictures. They still couldn't tell. Yeah. Well, it turned out this week that Peter Lick's people said, no, it was a composite. Yeah. Which everybody, oh, he's a fraud. Well, <laughs> you know what? He's I composite a, all the time. He's an artist. And here's That's the thing right. that, that I want to say is that it's all about art, right? We're all artists. Ansel Adams. Exactly. You know, I was just thinking that as you were talking about that, is I hear people say, Photoshop's cheating. Well, guess what? Ansel Adams, he is and was a great photographer, but he was even a better black, dark rumor, black rumor, <laughs> black, I say rumor. black rumor. He, he, he was a master at the dark room. He would spend weeks perfecting an image yep. that he had shot. So he was always dodging and burning. I mean, that was kind of his, his thing, right? Yeah. His, his pictures did not look the way they looked right out of the camera. No. They just didn't. But you know what? People never question his authenticity. Um, where people always question Peter Lick, and I, you know, and I don't. I, I believe Peter Lick is that good. He, he is a phenomenal. And, and, and you know what, man? If he can create post-processed image, I'm not going to say Photoshop because maybe he doesn't use Photoshop. Maybe that's how he's gotten around that. I don't use Photoshop, but I use on one, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever. It is. But you know, whatever he ends up using, he's a master at it. His people are masters, and they, they probably spend a month or more just on one picture. But all that to say, man, it's your artwork. If people are buying and spending a million dollars for a print. Yeah, more power to them. Yeah, right? I, again, I it understand people being upset if you're passing it off as I did this in camera and you didn't. 
then that's okay. Because when I sold my million dollar prints, actually it was nine hundred ninety six thousand, <laughs> um, because that's why he got a million dollar print. Right. He got more than me, but no, <laughs> it's like you know, it just it's one of those things that like. So what? He's an yeah. artist. I We're constantly artists. shoot skies because I'm going to composite them into a <gasps> ugly, boring sky. You're a fraud! I am a fraud. If that makes you a fraud, I am a fraud. Wow. And I will proudly I say... all of your pictures were real. Right out of camera. It's just, this picture was from right out of this camera, <laughs> and that came right out of that camera. So And they got put together. So, so hey, we love sharing our little bites of information with you every time we do this show and hopefully you enjoy it That's too. Right. If you disagree or you think that we missed something, put it in the comments below. We love talking to you and engaging with you. And so. we will have a conversation with you every That's single right. time. So like always, if you've gotten to this point of the show, congratulations and thank you. <laughs> but we, <laughs> we ask that you actually like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Yes. It really makes us feel better. It makes us feel like Somebody loves us because we're very ego-driven photographers like you are too. But, no. <laughs> but anyways, please like and subscribe. Uh, fill in the comments below. We love to hear from you. And uh, we'll probably actually put the link to some of this stuff we were talking about. Also the backpack kit just so you have it okay. on there. But anyways, until next time, don't forget, say, say sushi. sushi.